What is going on everyone, Jace Two Cents here, and I haven't done this series in a while, but I've, I've always liked helping newcomers when it comes to the scene on giving people some ideas and some tips and tricks on being more efficient with their workflows, and just to be a little bit more excited about making videos. It was sort of my creator's corner type of series. It's been a while since I did one. We're gonna go ahead and do that today. And there's a ton of different ways that you can do things. You're gonna find content creators have different methods of kind of approach, approaching and achieving the same end result. So your results may vary and you might see people saying to do things a different way. Um, find what works best for you and then just kind of ignore the rest of people are saying, no, you're doing it wrong. That's just the way I kind of, that's the way I kind of do it. But we're gonna kind of talk about just two things today because there's obviously a lot that you can talk about. I'm gonna talk about how I do my color correction because I shoot in Sony S-Log, which is a professional format in my Sony FS7 and FS5 with Atomos Shogun Inferno recorder. And as you'll see when I pull in the footage, it's very, very flat. So I'm gonna show you how I do my color correction in that. And then I'm also gonna show you how I do my dual camera setup or even two, three, or four camera setups because what you're gonna see works up to four cameras. We have to import our footage, of course. So we are gonna bring in this MXF file. This is from my FS7 right here. And we're gonna bring in this file, this is from the Shogun, as you can see, Shogun Inf, Shogun Infernal. This is, or Inferno, this is from the FS5, and we're gonna bring both of those in. So as you can see, it's importing the files. This could take a little bit of time or a lot of time, depending on your system. And then we've got both of our files right here. Now, if I drag this into the timeline just like that, you can see just how flat this is right here. This color does not look very good because that's how S-Log is, it's basically, uh, sort of an HDR type of effect. So it's got more dynamic range, which allows us to actually capture more data in both highlights and shadows. But as you can see, until you process it, it's a very flat and boring image. But we're not gonna be working in the time like, like that. No, 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 that's not the way we're gonna do this. We are going to go ahead and create a dual camera or multi-cam sequence. We are gonna highlight the videos we wanna make a multi-cam sequence with, and we are gonna right click and do create multi-camera source sequence. Now normally I would use audio. In fact, I do even have a slate, which is what you can use to sync audio. You can see it right there on the table, and I do in fact clap it. The problem is I didn't actually have a mic set up on the FS5 because I'm a dork, and so there was nothing for it to sync with. So that means we're going to have to do it via video. Otherwise, we could normally just say, do it via audio and be good to go. So we're just going to use the endpoints, which means just start the multi-cam sequence where both of those clips start because I don't have time code synced on these. Sorry, Graham. I know you're going to show me how to do time code. We'll do that later. But we're just going to use the endpoints for now. It took both of those files, set them in a different bin, as you can see right there. They're in here. And now here is our one camera or one piece of file footage that has the camera data. Now you might be looking at this going, well, what the heck? There's only one camera showing up right there. Well, if you hit control or hold control and double click, you can see now we've got two different timelines here. So this is our footage. And as you can see, if I mute out the top layer, you can actually see the second camera. And what we're gonna do right now is we are going to sync these up. Now, again, this would be a whole lot easier if the other file or the other audio tracks here actually had something on them. If I had the FS5 actually had a mic hooked up, which I didn't, unfortunately, this would have been a whole lot easier. Both of the audio tracks you see right here are going into the FS7. One mic was on Austin, the other mic was on me, and so that's why they are synced up. But if, as you can see, they are both on this video track right here. The problem is we can't see the underlying track because we got this track on top of it. So I'm just gonna go in and temporarily bring down the opacity. Well, you can see right here, they are not in sync, right? Do you see, he's rubbing his eye right there. So we are clearly not in sync. And again, this is a lot more work than I should have to do, but this is because I did it poorly. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to, let's see if I can find a spot. Okay, so I'm gonna look I'm gonna look for right here, like right where he touches his eye. That's the top track. And now I'm gonna look for that on the bottom track here. Again, way more work than I should have to do simply because I forgot to hook up a mic. Otherwise we could just sync on the clap. So do it the right way. So you can see we're pretty much synced up right there. So now I'll bring the opacity of this one back to a hundred. And now they are in sync. 
not to be confused with the boy band. Now the reason why we wanna make changes over here separately is because we don't have to then trim all this up. We can just edit the main timeline here, unclipped all of the outtakes in there and stuff, our color correction, our audio changes, everything that we do here takes place over here. Now one thing we're gonna to wanna to do here while we're in this timeline is we wanna switch our view. So we go up to our, our, our playback here, we right click, we display mode, go to multi-camera, and now you can see both cameras. Now you can click back and forth on which camera you want to be active, or while it's playing, you can actually just use the number one and number two on your keyboard. So if I hit one, that's the first camera, two, that's the second camera, and while it's playing, I can actually switch between them. A special guest, uh, I don't know if you need an introduction, this is the one and only Post Malone, the number one streamer now, right, uh, the music streaming yes, on sir. how many platforms? I don't know. Yeah. Does it matter? <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, once I'm done playing, you can see the different cameras took effect right here. So that's the way that you will easily go back and forth between cameras in that timeline. But as you can see, the color on this is still pretty poor. So now we have to go ahead and do our color correction to this. And normally I would do this on an adjustment layer, but both these cameras are gonna be slightly different in terms of color tone and brightness and such. So I don't wanna apply them uh, an adjustment layer on top of both, I want them to kind of have their own, uh, I need to match the footage, so I'm not gonna be applying it to both. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead into my effects tab, go to my custom bin, and I'm gonna pull two strip over here and just apply that to the very top layer right here. Now that means we're gonna be editing this top video first. So let's go ahead and go back to our display mode of composite video so we can see just the ones that we have you know, on top right here. And then it opens up all these options over here under the effects controls. So once we drop two strip in here, we've got this Lumetri color, and then we've got input LUT right here, and this is where you can browse to your LUTs. Now there's some pre-installed LUTs here with Premiere, but I use ones that are specific to my camera and to the exact recording format that I'm using, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. So this is the LUT I'll be using right here. It's a Cine S-Log3 to a Rec. 709. And that's the way it looks when it applies the LUT. But as you can see, it's a bit dark, it's a bit contrasty. Now is where we can start making our changes. But more importantly, you'll notice it looks like that over here now. But you can see the other camera did not take effect yet because we haven't applied anything over here in this workflow. Now normally I'll use a gray card like you see right here to get my color balance, but we're pretty much in a studio environment now where the, the color is controlled, which is why we want to block out those skylights. We don't have color shift throughout the day and our lighting is pretty consistent. So I don't actually need to use the gray card, but I always start a clip with it. That way we can adjust it if we need to. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna find a shot. Where we're just kind of sitting here talking. and I'm gonna start playing around with the color to make it look, I don't know, presentable. I mean, that's the thing about color is it's subjective, right? You can go for a certain look and feel. So I'm going to go ahead and warm this up just a tone, make it a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to bring the exposure up slightly, which is kind of a bad move. We were slightly underexposed for this, but fortunately, because we we're shooting with pretty good cameras, uh, we're able to bring this up quite a bit before we get a lot of noise. So you can see there's noise and stuff in his shirt right there. But yeah, we normally don't want to go up in exposure. Down is where we want to go. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring the blacks down just slightly. That way our exposure doesn't affect any of that. So this way we can actually bring up exposure and skin tones without affecting the dark colored shirts that we have on. Uh, but the other thing here is we actually need to add a little bit more saturation because although we're using the LUT, uh, it's still a bit undersaturated and we can play with this quite a bit as you can see now it looks like we got sunburns or like we're cartoons or whatever i like to bring my saturation up to about 145 you can even type this in right here if you want and then we get a look like this then i like to go into creative i like to bring up the sharpness just a little bit because we add no sharpening whatsoever in camera we do all this in post and then i actually bring saturation up a little bit more even right here just a couple of points but then i bring the vibrance down and that's how we get this sort of a look, right? So now let's get a shot where we're kind of looking towards the camera so we can get a feel for it. And that might be a little bit on the warmer side of things. So now I can go up here and play with the temperature just a little bit. You bring it back a tad. See, we don't want it too cool. I kind of like it right around there. And there, that's not too bad. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off visibility on the top layer and I'm gonna start by copying this, so if you just right click and copy, you can bring the attributes. I'm gonna turn off this layer, bring up this one, and I'm gonna now paste the attributes. So at least we have a starting point that sort of, so you can see just by copying the attributes of the other camera, 
that's what we get. But you can see the color tone is a little bit different. There's a little bit more green in this footage. This is the FS7 right here, which is a superior camera to the FS5, even with a Shogun Inferno attached to it. So I wanna bring just a little bit of contrast to this one. There we go. I see I think that's starting to match pretty nicely. There's still a green hue in here though, and this is why using IPS panels is also really important. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn the top layer back on. I'm gonna go over here to uh, exposure and bring that up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go full resolution editing right here. But you can see now, that we still have a little bit of green tone. So that's where we come down here to our color wheels, which are pretty important. So we bring our color wheels up, and this is gonna be more in the mid-tone to highlights. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go opposite of green, which is magenta. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit. Because remember, we're trying to match the footage underneath. And I think we're getting pretty close right here. This still has a bit of a magenta in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull some magenta out of that one. And I think there's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of taste and personal preference in this. But let's see what we can do here in the highlights. Maybe do a little bit in the midtones. And I think we've got a fairly decent match. Now if we come over here back to our main timeline, as you can see, both have taken effect. So with that basic workflow that you just saw, this is what the timeline looks like. Post Malone was awesome enough to supply me with the non-vocal version track of Rockstar, so there's no vocals right here. This was kind of playing throughout the video. And the nice thing was when I wanted to kind of have it fade into like the, the video for Rockstar, then we just lined up the peaks and valleys and we switched from the, the normal, just regular track to the vocals and that's how you got this. And at the end of the day, this is what we had. So anyway, that was my workflow here for the dual camera interview here with Post Malone. I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. If you didn't check it out, go ahead and do so. The guy is super chill. He was really fun to hang out with, and uh, we'll be doing some stuff like that in the future. But if you guys want to see more Creator's Corner type of video like this, let me know what sort of subjects you want me to cover, and I'll do the best I can to do it. Anyway, guys, time to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.